So it's not a fanboy. Yeah, it's a fanboy. Oh, there's only oh, one of them, though. Good things to know. Yeah, also, and even are the other ones. When? All right. Kai is taking out of the Bible a lot in translations. It is. Kai is. Welcome to Intro to Greek. I'm very excited. Uh, we're gonna get started. Somebody want to open up some prayer to begin with? I will. Father, thank you, uh, thank you for Stephen and just uh, the the um, just the desire in his heart to uh, to teach, and uh, thank you for the time and effort he's put into to this class. And Father, I do pray that you'll help each of us just to honor uh, Stephen's commitment and and uh, give us give our own commitment to this uh, Lord, and just help us learn together and, and not just Greek, Father, but just to learn about each other and just grow in fellowship with mm-hmm. each other and. Um, Father, prepare our hearts and minds to uh, learn um, the language in which half of your word was written in and uh, that would enable us to um, better understand what you're trying to tell us. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the gift of your Holy Spirit and who indwells us, who sealed our, our citizenship in, in, in your kingdom, Lord, but also to help us um, understand your word and um, the, the, just the ability and the power to, to live it out in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, uh, so this is Intro to Greek, and uh, today's the first lesson. We're just going to go over the structure of the class, organization, and learn the alphabet. Uh, but to start with, here's outline, uh, general introductory matters, and we're going to go over the syllabus. Uh, lots of the questions you might have throughout the semester in the syllabus. Is this going to be on the test? Yes. Okay. We'll go over some some general tips and tricks. Uh, there's things that people have tried out in learning Greek that tend to work and are helpful. Uh, and then we'll get into some vocabulary for today's lesson and going forward. Every every week there'll be a slide with vocabulary for the day. Uh, not like vocabulary words to memorize, but vocabulary, just words you might not be familiar with, like lexicographical, lexicographical, that kind of lexicon is just a dictionary, but these are words that are common to learning the language of Greek. You just kind of need to know what they mean so that we can continue talking. Then we'll go over the alphabet, and we'll learn the alphabet, and that's the goal for today is that you walk out knowing the Greek alphabet, Uh, and by next week you have it backwards and forwards, and we can move on and start using it. Now we'll go over the homework, Uh, but to start with, go to your syllabus. Uh, You've got I, I organized this, based it off of my own syllabi in, in seminary. Uh, course description, course objectives. If you want to know what you should hopefully be able to do by the end of uh, December uh, with Greek, that's what it is in the course objectives. Your textbooks are right there in your mouths, grammar and workbook. The grammar is your holy grail. It's uh, really everything that we cover in class theoretically you could get just reading that book carefully on your own. Uh, the point of class time is so that you got somebody who is a little bit further along in learning it so that you can ask questions and clarify things. Uh, but that thing knows the guy, <laughs> Bill Mounts is one of the leading uh, Koine Greek scholars. He's written most of the good textbooks out there on, on Greek. Uh, some suggested supplements, other books that you might want to get. I just didn't have in my budget to get for you guys. Uh, these three in particular. Uh, start with BDAG. This is the Greek English lexicon. This is the one to go to that uh, it's the standard bearer of you want to know the meaning of a Greek word, you look it up in here. Uh, and I'll let you carry on. This is the expensive one. This is $150 to buy new. Uh, but third edition is the best. You can get the second edition. Uh, but the formatting in a third edition, I actually think, is worth the extra money so you for the third edition. Book. Okay. Uh, Did you call it BDAG? BDAG, B D A G. It's so the the authors, authors. Yeah. Uh, and that's the anybody who knows Greek. You, you mentioned BDAG, they'll know what you're talking about. It's it's pretty. Wait, what's BDAG? That book. That's the first letters of the author's names. Gosh. B D A G. Uh, English Grammar for Language Students, the one on the bottom. This is a great little book 
to help you with the kind of vocabulary stuff I was talking about earlier. Uh, if we're talking about participles in Greek, which I don't think we'll get to in this class, but you need to know what a participle is and have a working knowledge of it. In English, a participle is the ing words. It's a verbal uh, verbal noun, I'm, or verbal adjective, excuse me. I'm jumping, right? That's a participle. Uh, whereas jump is a verb, jumping describes a person who is doing the verb, right? Stuff like that. This is the English grammar, and it, it's a really nice little, tells you, tells you the kind of words and gets you flowing in, in the English side of things so that you can translate it to Greek better. Because we're learning this in a technical manner, uh, you need to know a little bit of the technicality. This is a good little cheap book. And then this is Greek New Testament, uh, Novum Testamentum Graecia. Uh, the Germans put this together. It's the best in terms of a uh, textual critics. Greek New Testament, it's just this is the Bible. And then all of these notes tell you about the sources that we have, uh, textual <coughs> variants, where those uh, copies came from, etc. And then there's a dictionary in the back. If you want to get the version with the dictionary, it's very helpful because when you get to where you can read this thing, uh, you'll get to a word that you just don't recognize because you haven't memorized it in your vocabulary because uh, it's just not a very widely used word. You can flip to the back of the book and look it up real quick instead of going all the way to BDAG. I keep this, if you didn't notice with my Bible, I always keep it strapped to the back so that I can have my New Testament Greek right there in book form. Uh, good, so you can look at that. All those, uh, there's other supplements uh, on there to help you. Uh, Greek, English, interlinears, uh, stuff like that. That's all in the suggested supplement section on the syllabus. Uh, all those, if you want to get one, I definitely would encourage you to get get those books if you're serious about learning biblical Greek, etc. Uh, if you just copy and paste the ISBN numbers into Amazon, they'll come right up. And uh, this will be online on the website, so you can do that later. Uh, moving along, each class class structure be 60 minutes, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and this is how I'm going to try and break it down. And I made this part up myself, uh, mostly from my own experience with Greek classes. Here's how we would do it in seminary. Uh, we would go read the, the sections of the textbook prior to class that we were going to talk about in class. And we would do the homework prior to class of the <coughs> concepts we were going to talk about in class. And in class, we would just talk about the homework, review what we read and what we learned, and then move on. Uh, I didn't like that because it basically all the practice that you got for the homework was prior to having a skilled professional tell you about the information. So I, I broke it up differently. What you read and what you, the homework you do is for after that class period. So when we're done here today, the homework listed in the assignments thing, that's what you would go home that day and start working on for that week, and then we come back and do it. So the beginning of class, we'll review the first half, what we did last week in the homework, and the second half, half we'll learn new material. So every class period, we're technically talking about two different sets of things. Uh, the 10 minute review quiz, every, every time we meet, 2 o'clock, we'll have a quiz just going over what we did last week. Next week, the quiz will be write the alphabet, capital and lowercase letters in order. Uh, real simple. There'll be a 15 minute review of the homework uh, from the workbook, and then 5 minute break, 20 minute of new material, and 10 minutes of clarifying any questions, new material or old material. There we go. So, I think. That'll work well. We can adjust that as we go if we need to. Uh, course requirements, you can read those. The, there's essentially homework. There's three sections of homework every week. There's the reading and the grammar, the workbook questions or section that goes along with the reading and the grammar, and then there's memorization. One of the facts of learning Greek and really learning any language is that there is memorization involved. Just wrote, you need to be able to just throw these things off uh, the top of your head uh, so that you can get used to using it and learning it. And then there's vocab memorization. Again, there's tips and tricks for learning words, but some of them you just gotta, you just gotta learn it, force yourself to. Uh, we talk about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. And sometimes I'll say, this is a bootstrap word. There's no fancy way or English word I can use to help you remember it. You just gotta force it into your brain. Uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of a thing. We'll get to that kind of thing. <coughs> the assignment schedule, like I said, it's on the syllabus. 
is that clear to everyone of how that works? You got the column that tells you what chapters to read in the grammar, the hardcover book. And you got the column that tells you what exercises to do in the workbook. And if you flip through the workbook, it's pretty self-explanatory. It says exercise and a number. That's the exercise you do. And then tells you what you need to memorize. And that should be clear by the end of the class period what all that means uh, that day. Uh, when we get to it, there's two different tracks you can take in Mounce's grammar. And we're taking track two. Uh, which means that there's a little bit of jumping around in chapters. So this is going to be helpful, particularly when we get into October, because we'll be reading the book out of order. Uh, I did that because I want to give you guys more of a, a widespread, less deep view of everything. And Mounts, what he does is he goes through all of the nouns and gives you everything that you need to ever know about nouns, and then moves on to verbs. I wanted to give you level one and two of nouns, level one of verbs, instead of giving you levels one, two, three, four of nouns and never getting to verbs. That kind of thing. <coughs> uh, so, just to yep. my personal knowledge, um, is the Greek that we're using now still being used? No. Okay, so it's, de it's a dead language. Too. Correct. Okay. It's Koine Greek. We're actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. So hold that one up. No, that's okay. I was just, I just thought it yeah. occurred. Yeah, you're learning Koine Greek. This is first century colloquial Greek. It's what they would speak on the streets. That's what the Bible was written in. It's in the common tongue of the, of the day, Greek. Uh, there's Attic Greek, which is the other ancient Greek that lots of people learn. That's with, from about 500 to 700 BC. That's what Homer and uh, Plato, Aristotle, that's what they wrote in, was Attic Greek. It's pretty similar, but different enough that uh, you can't tell what you're reading. And then modern day Greek is has roughly the same alphabet, but again, different constructions, different grammar rules. Uh, you would be able to probably sound out signs in Greece today, and that's about it. Learning Biblical Greek, the, the vocab is very different. Uh, that, that clear with, uh, so far? All right, tips and tricks. First tip and trick is the most the best tip, the most essential tip is 20 minutes a day. If you can block off 20 minutes a day right before you go to bed, during your lunch break, where you just force yourself to review this stuff, even if you feel like you already know it, even if you don't want to, uh, you just say, these 20 minutes, I'm going to keep repeating these words over and over and over again, just so they're burned into my brain. Uh, whatever you need to do to review, just 20 minutes every day. Uh, that will go miles towards being comfortable with this material. Uh, and if you can just make that a priority up front, it's a lot easier than when you get halfway through and you're drowning and you're like, I, I don't know how to catch up. And it's like, well, you need to go 30 minutes a day. <laughs> uh, that's when I started doing that, the second time I, I went through the first two classes of Greek, uh, it made a world of difference. Uh, View Greek study as a form of worship. The, the point of learning this language is so that you can get closer to the original text and see what the original, get, get a, 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 almost an inside view into what the author was thinking a little bit better. Uh, the analogy that's used, and I think it's true, is it's, it's like reading the Bible in English, we have spectacular translations. You can get the point of the Bible in English, but it's like watching a black and white TV from the 60s. Uh, Whereas watch, reading it in Greek, it's, it's like HD, full brilliance color kind of a thing. So many little things just pop out at you that you don't see on a grainy old TV. Uh, and it's, it takes a lot of work to get there. It's, it's a lot of work for what some would say is very little gain, and I say is a massive gain. But uh, it kind of just depends on how much you want it. Taking notes in, hand, in class by hand very helpful. Uh, forcing yourself to write out things, particularly Greek words as you're learning them, and Greek forms, just repeatedly writing the forms out. Uh, again, drills it into your brain easier so that it's, it's on a, an operating level of knowledge, not on a research level of knowledge. You can, when we're talking, you don't have to think about a uh, verb and noun in your sentences. They just happen in English, right? You just... He went to the store. Okay. If, if, if I say, he went to the, 
and then expected you to think that that was a full <coughs> sentence, everybody goes, wait, wait, what? The, like, you need to finish that sentence. Where did he, what is the the that he went to? It just doesn't sound right. Because we have English on that top level, operating <coughs> level of, of knowledge. We don't have to think about, okay, we need uh, a he, that's the subject, and then we need a predicate, uh, we need an object, the, the store. Okay, the implies that we don't have to work through all of that. And that's what you're going to be doing when you start learning Greek, is you're going to be working through all of that kind of stuff. But once you get it to where it's just flowing, off the top of your head, operational kind of knowledge, uh, it makes a lot more sense and you get a lot more out of it. So. Don't fear the fog. Uh, reference to an old John Carpenter movie, The Fog. <laughs> uh, there, there's the fog in this class. Is Every week you'll walk out going, I have no idea what's going on. There were symbols and letters, and there were lots of sounds, uh, and I think I'm scared. Uh, but it, it moves with you. You'll get to week three, and you'll look back at week one and go, oh, yeah, I got that. That's easy. I could teach that to somebody else now. But the week three material, you're like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and then at week six, you'll be looking at, back at week three, like, okay, I, I understand that. I've been using it. I can do it. Uh, so don't fear that, particularly the first half of the class when you're in the fog a lot and you're you just have no idea which way to look just keep soldiering on uh the there's a light at the end of the tunnel kind of a thing uh you'll, you'll get there two other great tips uh one is anki it's a flashcard app that i use on my phone uh and it is great it basically keeps track of how good you are at your flashcards so <coughs> i built up my flashcards and i can share these with you uh and so I have them broken down into Greek verbs, Greek nouns, Greek grammar, etc. And it flashes something, I'll go. So I have to think, okay, what's, what's the other side of this card? You click it and it pops up. And I say, did I get it right? And you tell it how long to wait before it shows you that card again. So it keeps track of what you know well and what you don't know well. If you tell it you missed it, then it'll give it to you again in 10 minutes. And so 10 minutes later, you do it. Uh, it's a good way of weeding out the things that you don't really need to practice as much. Uh, nice little tool. It's free on your browser. Uh, I think it's like $15 app to use on your phone. Uh, worth every penny. Once I, I was using it on my computer for like three weeks, just the free version through the browser, and then I realized, okay, I, if I get this on my phone, I can do this. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, a little bit crude, but it's a good toilet app. <laughs> you know, you're sitting there, and you just drill your Greek because you got nothing else to do. Right? Uh, that sort of thing. So I do all my language. Yeah. Other, if you want to go old school, colored flashcards are very helpful. Uh, I, I used to use uh, yellow for the, my nouns, purple for my adjectives, red for my verbs, and uh, put, put the Greek on one side and the English on another, and then I'd have somebody else reading the, the English, and they'd tell me, what's number three on this card? Number, number three is this Greek word. I'd give you the English. That kind of thing. Uh, good little tool, and keeping the colors helps you to keep different categories straight. Find your own ways that, to help you organize and keep straight what's going on. All right, everybody clear on the structure? Anything to go over for the syllabus? <coughs> At the bottom of the syllabus, you've got the agreement. If you could sign that, tear it off and give it to me by the end of the class. Uh, yeah. Are you going to get it on this? You're going to learn Greek with us? All right. I'll get you some books. Uh, Add you to my list. Had everybody here today, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, read through it. It explains exactly what's expected. 75% of the class meetings uh, show me that you're actually trying and you don't have to pay me anything. But if you don't meet that standard, you got to give me 50 bucks for the books and my time. So that's the deal. Give that to me by the end of class. Uh, We'll get into the vocabulary for this week. So, a couple of words to know. First of all, lexicon. Yeah, that's a question. I was going to ask, uh, how long is the homework going to be? Homework should take you about that, about that 20 minutes. The, the, the idea is 20 minutes a day. Of, that should cover all of your memorization, grammar, or workbooks and grammar reading. If you do actually 20 minutes a day, uh, five days a week, you should be able to get all of it done. Easy. If you don't do it every day, obviously, 
20 times 5 is uh, what, 100 minutes, and that's an hour and a little over an hour and a half of one day. That's what it should take to do it all at once. You won't learn it as well if you do all of your homework on one day in the week, by the way. It's part of learning language is repetition and daily repetition. So it's much better to break it up 20 minutes a day. Other questions before we move on? All right. A uh, couple words to know moving forward. One is a lexicon. That's a dictionary. Just a big fancy word that means dictionary. Uh, the reason you need a lexicon is so that you know what lexical form means. In Greek, one word can have almost 140 different formations. And there's one <coughs> root of that word, and then there's a whole bunch of different endings, prefixes, and suffixes that you can add to it to make it mean something different. We have similar things in English. Uh, like the example I gave earlier, jump and jumping. Okay, slightly different meaning, but the root word is jump. Uh, the lexical form is the one that's going to show up in the dictionary. So when you go to look it up, that's the word you're going to be looking for. And so you need to know the lexical form of a word when you're learning it. Uh, koine, we already talked about a little bit. That's the Greek that you're learning. That's first century common tongue. It's different from modern day Greek and it's different from the older kinds of Greek. Uh, it's got a little bit different alphabet than, than Attic classical Greek. It's one, one letter difference. Transliteration. Transliteration means putting the Greek word into English letters. So if we get the Greek word, uh, you guys probably all know one Greek word at least, agape. Agape. That's that's the letter. Those are the Greek letters. So to put this in English, it'd be agape. That's a transliteration. That's not a translation. A translation would be to take the English meaning of that word. What is the English meaning of that word? Love. Love. So everybody see the difference between a transliteration and a translation? Okay. Uh, not super important right now, but as you get to using it more, you're going to see both, and you need to be able to quickly tell the difference between a transliteration and a translation. So that's your vocab for today. Pretty easy stuff, right? Nothing too, too scary. There. We're going to get into the alphabet now. What, what time is it? 35 minutes. All right, perfect. This is the Greek alphabet. Sorry, you need to... Trans, uh, yeah, I didn't know it translation. Yeah, and I'm videotaping, see if that works out. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to put the video of the class, the PowerPoints, and the vo audio recording of the class all on the website. Uh, so you can watch it later if you need to, review what we went over, etc. Just look like you know what you're doing. Are we good? Good. Um, all right. Wait, boom. It actually awesome. worked. Thank you. And obviously, these are these are definitions I made up. So, those specific, the concept is the important part. The exact words are not. We're going to go on. Uh, alphabet. This is the Greek alphabet. You got the capital letters on the left, and the English or the lowercase letters on the right. Notice that there's a lot of letters that look a lot like English words, or English letters. Excuse me. Uh, Greek and English have fairly similar alphabets. This is not the hard part of learning Greek. Uh, you're learning Hebrew. The hard part is learning the alphabet, learning to read it. In Greek, learning the, the alphabet and reading it is the easy part. Uh, so we're going to, I'm going to say the Greek letter, you repeat it, and then we'll go through one by one and look at them. So alpha, alpha. alpha. Beta. Beta. Beta, gamma, gamma. gamma. Delta. Delta. Delta, epsilon, epsilon. Zeta. Zeta. Zeta, eta, Beta. Theta. 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 Iota. Iota. Kappa. Kappa. Lambda. 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 Mu. Mu. Nu. Nu. Xi. Xi. Omicron. Omicron. P. P. Rho. Rho. Sigma. Sigma. Tau. Tau. 
Upsilon. Upsilon. Phi. Phi. Chi. Chi. Psi. 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 Omega. 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 All right. You guys all just said the Greek alphabet. Good job. Yeah. So when you hear, like, it's one iota difference, that's... That's where it comes from. The letter iota. Well, like I said phi for five. Like yeah. Five. So, so there's some that you probably noticed. I said P instead of pi. pi. I said phi instead of phi and chi. Uh, yeah, the Greek system, uh, sororities and fraternities, they pronounce it wrong. Right. They're, they're a lie. <laughs> the eggs were a lie. Uh, they change, you mean they changed the, the way it sounded? Yes. Okay, this is the proper way. This is the proper the way to say those they letters. They didn't change moon. Correct. They didn't change moon. Either. Or they're, they're very similar. We're going to go through each of them individually. So this is just, that's the first pass at it. Uh, we'll look at some. So first of all, alpha. Uh, what I want you to do is write each letter as we go across. So alpha. It looks like a Jesus fish that's been squashed up a little bit taller. Okay? That's how you write it. Uh, it's ah. Everybody say ah. That's the sound that it makes. Ah as in father. Uh, if you turn to page uh, 8 and 9 in your grammars and follow along with me, it's right now. Turn to page 8 and 9 in your grammars. Uh, this is straight out of, uh, out of your grammar. So. I need a freaking desk. <laughs> yeah. I think it was eight and nine, isn't it? Yes. Oh, I took that off. So that's alpha. Ah. Oh. Next one, beta. It looks like an uppercase B, B. with a little hooky thing at the end of it. So, uh, way I write it, you start at the bottom and sweep up and then make your B. That's the lowercase letter. Uppercase letters of these are very easy, right? Write an A and write a B. That's how you do it. <coughs> All right. Uh, B is B as in Bible. That's the phonetic sound. Everybody say B. 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 Beta. Yes. B. 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 Is in Gamma is next. Think of it like a little Y with a little bit of a loop there. Uh, you can also write it like that. That's gamma. It's G, as in gone. It's like the end of a cursive T. Yes. Delta. There's a couple different ways to write delta. Sometimes you'll see it like that. Sometimes you'll see it like that. <coughs> How do I write it? Yeah, I write it like that. Which one? This one. That one's just easier. It's swoopier. Yeah, swoopier. And it, it looks, and it's duh, as in dog. It's the D sound. Uh, and it, it looks a lot like an English D. See the, the D there? It's got a little bit of a, of, of a curl. curl on the end. The capital letter of delta is a triangle. The only one that's changed so far is A. Now how it's pronounced. All right, so on delta, is there a significance to that? Is typically the symbol for change <coughs> or the difference between... Yeah. All of these, or lots of these Greek symbols have applications in math, and they're just, they just picked a letter. They just picked a letter and said, this is going to be the letter that means that. So no, there's no intrinsic significance to, to why they picked delta. Yeah. Uh, next we got epsilon. Let me put it down here. Epsilon, easy capital letter again, and pretty easy lowercase letter. It's just a, it's just a backwards three, yeah. Or normal case E for weird people. Everybody say epsilon. Epsilon. It's E as in met. Or. Or E in Spanish. Maybe epsilon or epsilon. 
or uh, epsilon, yeah. Uh, okay. uh, put a little more flair of it. It's like, uh, ep yeah, epsilon. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. All right, so everybody repeat those with me so far. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. I found, I'm just going to give you the chunks that I learned them in when I memorized the alphabet. <coughs> alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Zeta, theta, theta, kappa, lambda. Right? I just learned it really fast, and so you could, and those are the chunks that I learned them in and found good stopping points. Uh, come up with your own. There's, uh, nobody could find a good song, so it's just repeating it in some kind of a rhythm to help you. There's a song on um, Champion Forest Baptist website on it. There is? Mm -hmm. okay. It's uh, Mark Lanier. Okay. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you find it in... Uh, it's after like a Jackson 5 song. Okay. Two. Yeah. Like ABC? Yeah. Alpha, beta, beta, gamma. gamma. Uh, Zeta is next. It's harder, right? Yes, this is one of the, the harder yeah. ones for English writers to write. Like a, a squiggle. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a fancy squiggle. You need the little curl on the top, and you need the big S-shaped thing at the bottom. And Jenna, this isn't that good. You want? That's terrible. Can't do it. Right can't do it. Big curl on the on the top, little curl on the bottom. That's zeta, and that's z, as in days. <laughs> so we say zeta. 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 Z -z. Z -z -z -z. Z -z -z. Yeah. Ada, this is one of the. This is gonna be one of the confusing ones that trips you up. This is a vowel. Uh, I did that backwards, didn't I? It's so hard to write this upside down. <laughs> it's an e, but it's as an h. Correct. It looks like an h in English, but it's a vowel. It's a long e sound. A. As in obey. Like it's our normal A. Ada. Yeah. It's your normal A. And yes, exactly. In Greek, it's the long alpha. Next, you got theta. Theta, uppercase and lowercase, looks practically the same. Uppercase is a big circle with a line in it. And lowercase is a circle with a line in it. Does it matter if they meet the edges? No. Theta is your first double letter consonant. In, in English, we have to use two letters to make that sound, T-H. In, in Greek, there's only one, theta, as in the thing. Iota. Easiest Greek letter to learn. Iota is the Greek equivalent of I in English. It's not Iota, Iota. It's, it's Iota, yes. Iota. And, yes, and it's it's best to to learn it as Iota. And the reason, a couple of these pronunciations, the reason is if you remember the name of the letter, that's what sound it makes. Okay. Iota makes an E sound, or sometimes, very infrequently, it makes a short I sound, like I. Eh. Yeah, a little bit shorter than E. What is the clarification on the I as an entry the second I? It's, then that's why it's picked, is because it's both. Oh. But more frequently, it's the second I, yes. Intrigue or I. Intrigue. Okay. And our English I works the exact same way, right? It's, sometimes it's is, I. Sometimes it's I. I. Uh, and you know that just by learning the words, which which words are pronounced more with an I sound and more with an I sound. In general, though, you stick with the I sound. If you're not sure, just go with that. And uppercase is a big line. Lowercase is a little line. It's a lowercase I in English without the dot. Iota. Squiggle. So yeah, in English, we'd put that there. In Greek, you just leave it off. That's Iota. Kappa, another easy one, right? Kappa, kappa, kappa. It's the K sound, K, as in kitchen. 
and it looks exactly like your English letters do. Uppercase and lowercase K's. Small one's more fancy. Yeah. And it, uh, I guess in English you would do a K like this, lowercase, and in Greek you just do it like that. That's the only difference. Lambda. This is your l, l as in law sound. Uppercase is like that. It's a triangle without the bottom line. Lowercase, uh, on the screen you see those ones with like the fancy little curls and stuff. You see it just as much like this. Just two lines. Like upside down Y. Like from half life. Yes, like from half life. That's a lambda. From what? Video game. Don't worry about it. It's a what? It's a video game. It's a game. Yeah. Half Life 3 is coming out, man. Really? So, yeah, Lambda. That'd be cool, though. I like that. Mew. Mew or moo is your m sound, as in mother. Upcase, oh. again, very easy. It's just an M. Lowercase. Looks a little bit like a fancy U. I prefer to think of it like an M, and it helps me. You see, it's, it's got the, it's got all three, or all four lines, right? <coughs> One, two, three, four. Uh, when you read it, sometimes you you'll miss you'll miss this first line. It looks like a, a letter U, but remember that's a mu. It's it's a consonant. It makes a m sound. And those are all. Mm -hmm. New is another little bit confusing one. Uh, uppercase looks like a regular English N. What does the lowercase look like? A V. A v. A v. And for your first couple weeks of reading Greek words, every time you come to a new, you're going to pronounce it like a V. And you just got to stop and remind yourself, nope, that's a N. N. New, as in new. <laughs> Easy to remember, right? That's the shape it makes. Uh, sometimes you see a little bit more curved like that. Sometimes it's a little bit straighter. It just looks like a V. Uh, that's your new. N. C is the hardest letter to write. Uh, uppercase, it's three lines. Two longs and a short. Uh, lowercase is going to take some practice. And I'm going to have to come out in front of you. It's just more squiggles. Yes, if you can write your uh, your zeta, it's like the zeta, but with a little hiccup in the middle. All right, you start out, the zeta looks like this. All right, that's a terrible zeta. Excuse me. Don't worry about it. I got you. Can't read your handwriting, Steven. <laughs> A it's like C a different language. <laughs> has just a, an extra little loop in the middle and then a, a curve at the end. This is the hardest one. That's the one you're going to have to repeat the most. Yep. Is this a more common letter? Or do we have it's, to write down a lot? Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll have to write it fairly frequently. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's as common as X is in, in English. Yeah, right. Pretty much all of, the, all of these letters... You're going to need to know how to write them very easily. Uh, Sorry. Because if you don't, you'll get to the point where you uh, need to know it, and then you'll, you, like I said, you need it in operating like uh, knowledge. It just flows right off. As the German U. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Who's the German The German My camera just turned off. <laughs> you have to troubleshoot that. Uh, you want to stop? No, I'm sorry. Upsilon is like the German U. Yes, U. U. Omicron, O micron. O, micron means small, small O. Omicron, as in not. Uh, it's very similar in sound to alpha. A, O. A, O. Those are the differences. A, father, alpha. Omicron, all. Uh, 
Small difference, but important. And that's an Omicron. It's a hard one, right? Yeah, so difficult. You say one. not in the British accent. That's not. Good. Yeah. Not. Ah. Oh. Not. It's Omicron. Dad, no, not your British accent. It's Omicron. So it's like or an U as in. Oh, it's an Omicron. It's an Omicron. Yeah. Not. Um, not yeah. Not. That O is a little bit Omicron. Yeah, and it's Omicron. 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 You just pronounce it like an O in English. That's that's fine too. Ah, not. But there's a little bit, a little bit darker of, tone to it then. I got a little bit of the common English language when I speak it. P. You sound like Rose's mom. P. Guys, all probably recognize from math class. It looks like a little house. I've got a P. Oh, I'm sorry. And it, it's the P, as in peach, or P. I got a carrot. I got a yam, and I also got a P. <laughs> There's a path for you. I got a carrot. I got a yeah. I got a That's okay. I, just, I want to get through the funny part. Don't no, watch your time. It's Stephen's time. Now. Really is a confusing one. What does it look like in English? P. 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 Or an R. Or an R the without the little. Without the kickstand. Kickstand. This is row. Again, that's another one that you're going to be reading for three weeks in Greek, and every time you come to it, you're going to try and pronounce it like a P, but it's an R. R. P. I should, it's not an R. It's a R. <laughs> it's a R, as in rod. It's your hard R sound. Uh, sometimes you'll find it easier to flip it. R. R. I can't do the trilled R thing. I've tried for many, many years. Uh, yeah. But... You might just flip it, or just as a, what's the the word? An aspirated R. R. Rod. Sigma. Rod. This is the uppercase. There's two. S and yeah, there's two lowercase sigmas. You got this one. So you can write it like that, where you come around and then go across the top. You can also write it where you start with the little squiggle thing. Like the one that looks like an S. You can also write it like that. You just gotta or get that. Thing. This is the one that I found is the easiest to write while you're well, writing out one? Greek letters. What's the other one? On there? It's like the a other sigma. one looks like a, an S, right? That's called the final form. So anytime the letter sigma appears at the end of a word, mm -hmm. it looks like that. Oh, okay. If it appears in the middle of the word, anywhere but the end of the word, the it looks like this. Sigma. That's funny. <laughs> And it's an S sound, and you'll you'll get used to writing this one. Uh, almost a third of all of the Greek nouns, the lexical form ends in S, so looks like that. A uh, good word to remember: this is apostolos. Can you guess what apostolos means? Apostle. Yeah, apol. Uh, I forget if that's an omega or an omicron. I might have spelled it wrong, but oh yeah, I can totally see that. Most of us, yeah. So apostolos, but you got both sigmas there. Sigma there in the middle form, and sigma there in the final form. Everybody clear on on the difference between final form and Middle form of sigma. I start writing English words in Greek. Yeah. I did that for a while. That helps you get used to the letters. Yeah. Tau, another easy one. It looks like a T, and the lowercase looks like a T. a T. That's Tau, as in talk t t. Upsilon. This is the one deviation I made from the Oopsie. from the book. Uh, uppercase looks like a Y. Very confusing when you're reading uppercase words. And this comes along. You're like, oh yeah, that's a uh, uh sound. Uh, lowercase looks like a U. Essentially like what the sound it makes. Uh, cool. Uh, oopsilon. Uber. So yeah, cool. Or as in German, Uber. umlaut. Uh, e, upsilon. Uh, 
Really, if you if you just pronounce it like two O's, ooh. You could have just put Uber. Up here. That that works. Yeah, I could have put Uber. Uber. There's that little Uber. bit of a ooh to it. Which Uber is a German? I'm a goofy Uber. That's a yes. box, actually. Everybody say, Oops, 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 Next we got C. Uppercase looks like a big O with a line through it. Lowercase, there's two ways to write it. A little O with a line through it. That's the way I tend to do it. But the more cursive way is like you see on screen. Like that. Cursive. You'll see it. You'll see it both ways in manuscripts. It's up to the scribe to how he chose to write the letter fee. It's a good thing it doesn't really look like anything else. Yeah. Do they judge their writing style like sometimes we do? I mean, like. Yeah, based on the on the way they wrote is how you get lots of dates on this manuscript came from this time period because this is how they were writing oh, those right. letters. Okay. Uh, yeah, their their handwriting tells you a lot about the manuscript in particular. Yeah. Also, it'll tell you probably where they're from. I was going to say, whether they're educated versus... Mm -hmm. And if they're from Alexandria versus if they're right, from... the region that yeah. they're from. Okay. Chi. Chi. This is... This is <laughs> you can just pronounce it chi. A lot less aspirated, but chi is a little bit closer to it. Yeah, in the Greek system, in the fraternities, it's it's chi or chai. It's it's chi. This should sound Actually, This is lock. I've heard it pronounced lock. chai. Yeah, like chai. Chai omega. Alpha chai omega. Chai. 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 And that's and that's fine. It, you're pronouncing it chi. That's that's fine. It's just a little bit rougher. Chi. Some people like the chi is the k. The k is the chi. Yes. K is in key with just a little bit more fun. Kind of one of those lattes. Character. I learned it as character. 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 But loch uh, tells you a little bit more. It's, it's a little bit more aspirated, but not a whole lot. Character. Psi. Psi is weirdly differentiated. One just has a longer line. It looks like a trident, right? Like Poseidon. C, yeah, Poseidon. That's how I remembered it. So it looks like Poseidon's trident, and it's PC. And it makes the PS sound as in lips. Ps. Psychic. Psychic. I'm a Psychic. Yes. And in Greek, you do pronounce the P more, uh, whereas in English, you would drop the P and just pronounce it like a silent P. And then the last one, Omega. Oh, oh. Uppercase looks like a horseshoe. I always think about a watch. A watch. Yeah, that's exactly where I got it from. Oh. Lowercase looks like a W. O as in tone. It's the long O. O. Omega. O. It's O. Mega. Yeah. Remember how O micron, small O, and O mega, big O. We'll see that in a second when we look at it. So, we'll go through these one more time. And what I'm going to have you do is pronounce Close your books. the words with me. So, you know all of the letters now. Uh, you'll see I, I used a different font here just so you can get a taste for reading different Greek fonts. You don't want to get stuck with just one and think that that's how they're all written. But uh, So, alpha. Sound this word out with me. Alpha. Alpha. Alpha, lambda. Beta. 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 Okay, what's that little squiggly on top of the end? Don't worry about any squigglies yet. We'll learn about those next week. Just learn the the the, uh, the letters right now. We'll learn the, the punctuation later. So those are two mu's, so it's gamma. Yes, those are two mu's. So yeah. Gamma. Gamma. G. Gamma, delta. Yeah. So just like when you're back in first grade learning to sound out words, that's what you're doing now. You got to associate a sound with a shape. Epsilon. 
Epsilon. Let me sound that out. Epsilon. Because it's the ips, it's the lips. It's yes, it's the ps. You know, what's funny about that is on the epsilon, you would normally put in English the ep together. Yeah. And then the salon would be the, the, one another, but the other syllable. But in English, it's in English it's in the, 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 the ps by itself. Yes, yeah. ips. That's why that, that threw me off when I was looking at it. I was trying to figure yeah. it out. Okay. Next one. Zeta. Zeta. That's wait. The N is not an N. It's it's an Ada. It's a Ada as in obey. Right. So Ata. So Zeta Ata Theta. Those three letters are easy to remember, right? One right after the other. Like I said, it's okay. You're gonna get to this one and. Pronounce it like an N for a long time. You just got to keep reminding yourself. See that letter? That's an A. A. Theta. E O T A. E O T A. Kappa. K A. Uh, Kappa. Kappa. Kappa, 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 Kappa. Uh, I see Kappa song. Send this one out. L. Lambda. 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 So lambda. 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 The little apostrophe over there. I come from a lambda. Is it to an ass sound? Is that correct? No. Yeah, don't don't worry about any of the. I'm trying to find commonality here. That's no, that's good. Keep doing that, but no. Like I come from a land down lambda down under. You come from the lambda under. Yeah, but real shortly, lambda. It's almost as a transition, lambda. Yeah, and they get lazy in Greek the same way. Letters, when they they get hard to pronounce, everyone they they drop them. Moo, music, moo. So that's why there, there's kind of that ew sound. But if you just say moo, moo. as an oopsilon, moo, moo. moo. <laughs> new, new, new. Pronounce this one. Key. Key. Yeah, no. That's a key? X. C. C. Yeah, if you want to replace that with a KS to help you remember. C. But it would have to be like a KSI. C. Yeah. I can see you. O. Micron. O. R, that's a R. Omicron, that's a mu. Omi. It's an iota, yoda. It's a kappa. It's a yoda? It's a. R. 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 And then another Omicron. And then. Same thing. I don't know. That's That one's gonna bother me for a while. Yeah. So, Omicron. That's a good word to help you practice all those letters that are hard to remember, the sound associated with the shape. Because that looks like a, a U, but it's an M. That looks like a P, but it's an R. That one looks like a V, but it's an N. Right? So. Omicron. I was saying it as an English. Oh, yeah. Omicron. So, and Micron, what does that sound? Micro? In English, right? That's where we get the word small. I o. Small O. P. 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 E. P. Iota. P. Iota. Let's just pronounce this one. Ro. 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 Every time you see this, it's a R. 
R. You just got to drill that into your head. Ro. That makes the sound R. I'm going to put Ro. It's like a burning car. What about this one? Sigma. Ah. Sigma. So it's a sigma and a yoda, a gamma, a mu, and alpha. Sigma iota. Remember iota. Tau. Tau. U. Psilon. Upsilon. So it would be an upsilon. Yeah. Uh, no. It would be a ps sound. It's uh. I don't remember. Psi. 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 So yeah, upsilon, psi, iota, lambda, omicron, nu. Upsilon. Go back to that. You might go back to epsilon real quick. Yep. I just need to remember to there we go. Okay, combine so the P and the S. Mm -hmm. That always gets me. Because I was about to go back to Sigma for the S. But then I remembered it was covered by the P. Ps. Yeah. Phi. So you see the two different ways to write that lowercase there? Phi. Phi. Psi. Those three are pretty easy, right? Kind of like zeta, eta, theta. Phi, phi, psi. And then, o, m, e, g, a. Omega. O, mega, as in mega, big, big O, long O. Omega. All right. Let's do it one more time. Everybody together. I'm not going to say it first, you guys are going to say it with me. Ready? Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi. Do that one again. Xi, omicron, p, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon. Phi, chi, psi, omega. Omega. And this is just pure drilling it. Omega. Same way you learned the alphabet in English when you were growing up. You just repeated it. You learned a song. A, B, C, D, E, F. You do it the same way. Or you could just go through. Alphabet again and up to epsilon. Zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau. Upsilon, upcon. <laughs> Upsilon, phi, xi, so phi, q, uh, psi, omega. We're missing J and G. And G. Well, you got gamma, we got gamma. Yeah, you got gamma. Uh, what's the other one we're missing? J and um, W? Yeah, there's no W. I haven't actually sat down and thought what the, the differences are. Well, you have should be. That's what I was, I was just thinking. Well, but you got extra ones in here, too, so... You're missing even more than that. Yeah, How would two E's translate into Greek? Uh, so oh. I know my Stephen Stephanos is is Stephen in Greek, so it'd be. There's no C. Right, I don't, got a little bit more to get through, and got a minute to do it. So just reviewing some of the things we were going over. Here's the the tricky letters to remember. There's no F. Ada looks like an H, but it's a it's a vowel. A. Okay. Mu looks like a U. But it's an M. M. Mu. That one I don't have trouble with. That's all that meant. N. Looks like a V. But it's an N. It's N. Nu. P and Rho. Rho looks like a P. But it's a R sound. And Pi. And Pi is a P. P sound. So P. R. R. And I actually Rope. did that. I just wrote a P on one card and a row on the other. And I went, puh. And I looked at it. I just spit at it. Puh. And I looked at it. And I saw the saw the R. And so I just, when I saw that shape, I made that sound. You just do that. And that's how you train your brain to stop saying puh when you see a row. He. 
Looks like an X, but it's it doesn't make the X sound. That's this letter, C. Omega. Looks like a W, but it's an O. Omega. Last slide. You got your vowels. Alpha, Epsilon, Eta, Iota, Omicron, Upsilon, Omega. Notice there's two more vowels in Greek than there are in English. What are the two, two vowels that they have in Greek that we don't really have in English? We don't have an English equivalent for. Eta and Omega. Right, we got A, E, I, O, U, Alpha, Epsilon, Iota, Om uh, Omicron, Upsilon. But they've got an Eta, which is the lengthened A, and they've got Omega, which is the lengthened Omicron. Does that make... So in any language, you have vowels and consonants. Vowels are the sounds that, uh, that come through without interruption from the airflow. E, I, O, U, and straight consonants all have interruption with the tongue or the lips or the teeth or something. So these are all the vowels in Greek because they don't, when you say them, A, A, E, 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 O, U, O, they don't interrupt the flow. So these are your vowels in Greek. So in, in the same way that vowels, vowels function in English, vowels function in Greek. You've always got a vowel in your letter or in your word. Uh, you've always. Uh, That's just something you need to know, particularly next week when we cover diphthongs. Uh, we have diphthongs in English. We're going to talk about diphthongs in Greek. They have them in Greek, too? Yeah. I don't even know what it is. Oh, but... <laughs> also, your double letter transliterations, right? So when you write the English equivalent of these letters, you have to use two English letters. T-H, P-H, uh, C-H, and P-S. So remembering that if you're trying to equate it with English, and, and I would encourage you, don't try to equate this with English too much. Instead, look at these as shapes that have a sound associated with them. Can you go over the translations for the double letter again? Yep, T-H, P-H, F, C-H, H, and P-S, P-C. That's all we're learning today. Is that enough? Yes. <laughs> so like I said, the fog. <laughs> right now it's like the, the fog is thick. <laughs> uh, worry not. In two weeks you're going to be looking back at this going, oh yeah, alphabet. No problem. If you don't spend a lot of time repeating this this week, you're not going to be looking back at the fog on the alphabet. But... And like I said, if you know the letters well, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, epsilon, phi, chi, psi, omega, uh, if you can do that, uh, you'll remember the sound they make. Because the first sound that they make in the name of the letter is the sound that they make. A, alpha, b, beta, g, gamma, d, delta, e, epsilon, z, zeta, a, Eta, th, theta, e, iota, k, kappa, l, lambda, etc. So if you know the name of the letter, you know the sound it makes. So you drill the name of the letter. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, c, omicron, p, rho, sigma, etc. And you can start pronouncing words. Yeah, and you can start pronouncing words. So next week, the homework is going to be just to read through the, the, the exercise in there. You'll see it's John 1. And you're just going to be reading. En arche, en halagas. In the beginning was the word. Uh, you won't know what the words mean. You just got to practice looking at the letters, remembering this, the sound associated with the, with the shape. So word is lagas? Or logos? Lagas. Lagas. We always said logos. And uh, the first, I think it's the first exercise in there is just the alphabet, and you just you just practice writing it. And every time you, when you're doing the exercise, every time you write the letter, 
Make the sound. Alpha. 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 Beta. 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 And do it as much as you need to until you can rip them off. One by one. Wait, so it does follow the first letter of each? Yeah, the, f- the, the first letter of, of the spelling of each one is that letter. That's easier than doing all this stuff. Hmm. And that's the homework. Know the whole alphabet, uppercase and lowercase. So when we come in the quiz next week, it'll just be write the alphabet, uppercase and lowercase. Uh, yeah, I don't have my syllabus anymore. Uh, yeah, it's exercise three. Exercise three? Yes. Yeah, what's the, what does it say listed as the exercise homework on? It just says three? Just three. Okay.